Hi, I'm Christian Williams, Global Transformations Coach, and in today's short video, we're going to be doing a new segment called Fact or Fiction. We send out a email to our email list, and if you want to be registered on that email list, just comment your email below, and we ask them some of the facts or fictions and some of the questions they might have that we can bust today and explain them to you. So I'm going to rattle through some questions, and hopefully, Whoever sent them in is going to benefit, but also you are too. So the first one, does sweating mean I am burning? And in short, yes, you are burning. But what are you actually burning? Are you burning calories? Are you burning fat? Obviously, when the core temperature rises, the temperature is going to increase. And can that help fat deposits be burnt? Yes, it certainly can. And there's a lot of research done in terms of saunas and working out in hot temperatures, but so can cold by shivering and so forth. But it's not going to give you the level of calories that you think, because we could go and stand in the sauna for 30 minutes and we can sweat a lot, but would we come out with a six pack? The chance is not. So if you can combine your workout and if you can push your body hard enough that you're actually burning calories in use for energy and pushing that core temperature up, to help that fat deposit breakdown. Yes, of course, it's gonna be an assisted tool that you can use to help burn fat and burn calories, but it's not the only one. Can I lose weight off diet alone? And the answer is yes, you can. You can certainly lose weight from diet alone. As long as you are eating less calories than the body's burning, you will simply lose weight. Even if them calories are not coming from good sources of food, but the issue with that is, the goal for anybody trying to build an aesthetic physique shouldn't be to just lose weight. No, because if we lose muscle in regards to losing weight, our metabolism is going to go down. And that means that the look is not going to be as you expected. And the body fat probably is going to remain the same. So the objective should be to always combine good calories and good diet with exercise, weight training to maintain your muscle mass, cardiovascular training to work the heart and to help the body burn body fat for fuel and good nourishment. The other downside of only using calories to burn and lose weight is that you have to eat so little. And if you eat in so little, it means you're not nourishing your body, you're not nourishing your brain and you're losing out on potential functionality. Do carrots make me see in the dark? Well, Kind of and kind of not. So carrots contain vitamin A and vitamin A actually converts the light into signal in the center of the brain. Okay, so it actually improves the level of sight in dim lights. Vitamin C does and like I said carrots contain vitamin C. Now is it going to make you go out and allow you to be able to see far in the dark? No. But all these minerals and all these macro and micronutrients are going to be very important for you for functionality. The way you think, the way you feel, the way you see, the way you hear, the way you conduct yourself. So your food and your diet should definitely contain a lot of bright colors, a lot of vegetables and a lot of good quality supplementation as well. Does lifting weights make me look bulky as a female? It depends really, it depends on what the goal is. Certainly there's different styles of lifting weights and there's different purpose of lifting weights. Are you trying to build bone density? Are you trying to improve functionality, improve the posture? And lifting weights is very versatile for everybody depending on the goal and depending on the goal that applies uh, the application. Okay, so if you wanted to build muscle, you would obviously need to be lifting a lot of heavy weight, heavy weights for low repetitions and eating a lot of food. And the advantage that a male has over female is the testosterone, which is the male sex hormone, is very high. And I can tell you from personal experience, even with high testosterone, even with training as hard as I'm physically possible, possi possibly able to train, as nourishing my body with enough calories and taking all the right supplements, even then, it's a fight to gain any muscle at all because it doesn't come easy. So most females go into the gym, lifting some weights, exercising their body, not pushing themselves to fatigue, not lifting too heavy, and not gonna get bulky. All that's gonna do is improve your tone, it's gonna improve your skeletal system because it's gonna help the bones get denser, 
and your metabolism, which is very important because weight training itself actually stimulates your metabolism further than any cardiovascular training. So definitely, if you're a female out there and you're a little bit concerned about being bulky, as long as your calories are under control, as long as the reps are not too low and the weight is not too heavy, you'll be absolutely fine. Too busy. Do I need eight hours sleep to get the best results? No. The sleep quantity is certainly not as important as the sleep quality. And I always say to people, eight hours a, a night of sleep, that's one third of your life you, sl you sleep in. What we aim to do or should aim to do is sleep efficiently. You wanna get maximum out of your sleep. I personally, I sleep for six hours a day and that is absolutely fine. And anybody who knows me in person knows I'm on the go, I'm moving, I've got a lot of energy, I've got a lot of things going on. I'm weight training, I'm doing cardiovascular training. But what I ensure is the quality of my sleep is improved. And how I do that is I prepare for any event I, I obtain or I aim to. I prepare for the sleep. I dim the lights, I turn the phone off, I relax my mind. I take some key supplements to help me fall into that deeper pattern of sleep, which is allowing me to recover. There's a few different stages of sleep. And what's important is we hit that REM, that REM, the rapid eye movement of sleep. And that's where we get the recovery, although the brain is functioning quite, because it's in the dream state. If we not reach in these deeper states of sleep, it doesn't matter how long you lay in the bed for you're never gonna recover. So try not to sleep as long, try to sleep more effectively. Quality always wins over quantity. Does cardio lower testosterone? That's a very good question because what we always told is any form of exercise increases testosterone. But it's not true, especially when it comes to cardiovascular training. Because if you're working out for more than 75 minutes, your cortisol levels are gonna dramatically increase. And the science backs it up, the increased levels in cortisol is gonna certainly lower testosterone because it's a stress hormone. And also, one thing I've learned from doing the cycling form of cardio myself, and in fact, any form of cardio that creates this consistent moving up and down for a long duration, the testicles are having that movement especially being sat on the bike. So this is not putting the, the testicles in a very healthy state, which can negatively impact testosterone. Does that mean that you don't do cardio? No, that certainly means that you keep doing cardio because you need to improve the cardiovascular system. But what you do do is you ensure that you're sleeping right, that you're eating right, that you're lifting weights, that you're trying to try every natural a chance of improving testosterone and supplementing with some good testosterone boosters or free testosterone uh, boosters as well. So it can lower the testosterone like any form of stress, but where there's a will, there's a way and we need that testosterone peaking. Now they say that no question's a silly question, only the one that you didn't ask. This one, I'm, well I'll let you be the judge. Does masturbation lower muscle gains? 